Um, I, um, yeah, I wrote a, a fairly big um, post and did some mapping of a collaboration to fix some. Um, I, um, yeah, I wrote a, a fairly big uh, post and did mapping. I was actually going to open it so I could see the chat, Ben, but I haven't gotten there yet. Is there a way to to do that without? Ah, gotcha. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Wonderful. Welcome. What was going on there? Shall I start again? Yeah, I, I did a I had a really big collaborate collaborative problem solving at work. Um where there were silos and we had a problem and it was gonna be one person's job to fix it and I had to get all the people to collaborate. Even though they knew <laughs> that it may have been, all oh, right, so it's the problems in my area then. So I got a map together of you know what I had to do in order to get people to you know, to stay engaged. I'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I did um, quite a bit of thinking um, about this whole notion of mapping for good, and. Uh, I did do a little mapping and um, it was sort of built off the, the, the image that I tweeted. Um, and I, I tried to do it from the bottom up in a weird way. I was like, okay, what, is, what are all the things I already do? Let me look at the stable stuff to see if perhaps um, there's value I could be delivering that I'm not delivering. So rather than starting with the user, I sort of started with the the bottom stable part or the right hand side and the more invisible parts to try and make them visible and it was a really interesting thing because in order to do the value chain i had to go go back apparently i don't have enough self-awareness to to do this on my own but i actually went back and read through this file that i keep that's called testimonials because basically the things that people email me when they see the draft of the animations that I'm working on with them Ooh, and my, okay. with my collaborators. And so just hearing, like, I just sort of took a little inventory of words about like, what do people seem to be getting value out of? And they weren't necessarily things that I want to deliver, like really good explanations. I'm like, no, I don't want to do explainer videos, but like, that's <laughs> what the value is. So it's like, well, okay, you got to build on that. Like, if that's part of it, then yeah. And mm. so I um, I mapped it, it's, it's pretty messy, but of course maps are messy. And um, I did it on its own mirror board, so I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I could copy and paste the post-its onto our board. I don't know, how would I, should I, should I try that? By all means, yeah. I think it should okay. be able to, to copy and paste things across. And and you'll never, you never guess, you're never a dull moment, but apparently, my microphone was completely cut out that whole time for the stream. So <laughs> it happens, you know, to do over, you know, I'll just, I'll just time stamp it, technical difficulties, boom, and we're back. <laughs> so we didn't hear nothing, none of that. Uh, none of it from me. They heard, they heard oh, you all, which is great. That's all that matters, honestly. Okay, so ben. I'll, I'll do, I'll do kind of a, a re-intro. I'll try again. <laughs> okay. Hello, everybody. Um, you heard a little bit from Mike and a little bit from Sue. Um, my name is Ben Mosier. I run learnworthymapping.com. And we've brought Mike and Sue back again to talk about collaborative and cooperative kind of modes of worthy mapping. And so that was the lead into everything that, that Mike and Sue were share, was sharing just now. And uh, yeah, let's, let's open up the Miro board. It looks like Sue's going to copy and paste some things in for us to take a look at. Oh, I see you got some things there. And I'll make it yeah, so that it's... everyone can see. What we're working on. I drew, I dragged it like way out in the middle of nowhere. So we can, we can bundle it together and move it if we need to. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about this. This is for your Patreon. Is that right? 
Uh, well, so this was more, it emerged from, I don't know if you saw that thing I, I posted on, on the Twitter. I did. It was amazing. <laughs> I, uh, I should probably have that image handy and I, and I don't. I'll work um, on it let me see. in the background. I can copy and paste that as well here from my other Miro board. Okay. I just that pasted is. it. Um, so this was a little bit, and this map I basically had sort of overlaying on that. Oops, hang on. Let me bring all that to the front. So um, basically what I did was I just started with the stuff I already do way over here on the left. It says things like, I think, because <laughs> I think a lot. I play with thinking. I spend a lot of time wondering and hunting for connections. Like, you know, I love to hunt for connections between Warley mapping and Kinevin and theory of graceful extensibility. And so I just basically made the list of the stuff that I already do. And then I tried to do a little bit, you know, that, that icky guy, I don't know how you pronounce it, of like, what does the world need? What do you love? What are you good at? And what can you get paid for yeah. kind of thing? And, um, and what the world needs, I've got this, I tried to basically find the overlap. And ah, then I okay. took those over to the right hand side, some of the things like, well, so I basically then started with um, stuff that already was on the map. I don't like, like I put beauty. So for me that showed up at, here in the green posted as like attending to aesthetics because it was also one of the values that people had named in my little list of testimonials. Like, oh, it was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Like they didn't expect it to be beautiful, like the animation. So, and the reason I put animations at the top was because that is, at least so far, it's one of my primary like modes of value delivery. Um, so it. that's just why it says that's like the main conduit, I guess. It could be anything. It could be tweets, I guess. You know, I mean, who knows? Oh, this is making my mind go in all sorts of lovely directions. So, so Prasanna Krishnamurthy, who runs Upeka B, um, and, and does a lot of like mapping stuff, ta taught me about something called effectuation. And effectuation has this principle around um, what's like a patchwork of things where like you bring something and I bring something and, and what's what's readily available for, for me that you need, but is scarce for you. And then vice versa, basically I can provide that and you can provide what you have. And basically it's it's like the stone soup of, of collaboration and cooperation. I love that. And what comes to mind right here is with this inventory that you're taking kind of of what you do and so on. Like if if we all made maps of the things that we do and we could share those together. We could see places where there are nice ways that they could fit together. So already I'm seeing like the possibilities for collaboration just by externalizing the skills that we do and the work that we do. Yeah, the, the data that Sue's got is really powerful because you could look at these things that people say, this is what I needed. And if you don't have those, it might not work. Hmm. Someone might say it, it needs to be beautiful. You know, I need to, I need to want to like it mm. for it to you work had for me. One client say that to me, Mike. Yeah. And it, just one. Just one. Said, oh, and it has to be beautiful. Right. And I was like, oh yes. No pressure. But yeah. <laughs> but these are all I mean, you know, it's it's not a it's not a checklist that you have to do, but it's something you can look at and say, here's what's worked in the past. You know, like, mm -hmm, yeah. um, like, 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 I'm interested in you know taking apart past collaborations, working out you know why did they work, yeah, and then using that going forward to go, which of these you know which of this you know this set of green post-it notes, you know is going to be important this time. And if something isn't working, you know, can I attend to aesthetics more? Does it need a bit more of the other things? So. It's. I think these things are so valuable because this is where we can, with the with these kind of diagrams, and not even with maps, we can start to 
picture and share what we've done and what's worked. Yeah. By the way, I did try and use the x-axis here. Oh, what is your x-axis, Sue? So it's Wiley's axis. I just didn't draw the lines in, but like like the skills that are are like least visible to the to the viewer is things like my ability to make things move in After Effects. Like, and it's one of my most stable. Drawing is one of my most stable, so it's on the right, but it's also the most visible or one of the most visible story is closer to to the, the the user so things like this over here on the left i put gathering people together to wrestle with messy topic Ooh, yeah because that is on the left hand side i'm not good at that but ben's good at that so there's a win-win we should put that on our skill map our, our collective skill map here um and i love this idea by the way ben the i i think it what, what it seems to me is not perhaps not so much m revealing moves from left to right, like how do we want to shift something to the more stable, but sometimes how do we see, see synergies where these things come together in terms of deli delivering value out, like mm. we're doing potentially now, although we, we don't know that we're delivering value. <laughs> we'll find out. Yeah. And, and they'll yeah. let us know. Um, already getting some interesting stuff in chat too about like the language oh, cool. that we're using. Um, like Janice uh, mentioned in the chat, like interesting language, hearing scarcity, needs, wants, sharing, just it's putting them in a, in a space yeah. of shines helping and, and things like that. Which I, I have love. that book. Love that book. Me too. I'm just like, it's, it's right over here. It's like one of the best books, I think, um, has led to a lot mm -hmm. of awareness of myself and the ways yeah. that I help people in ways they right. don't want to be helped <laughs> oh so this is so resonant for me right yeah. now i won't even tell you the story but what do you think about that mike do you want to you want to give that a go where the three of us could map yeah like maybe we could do like a round robin of sort of facilitating each other where the other two are sort of like well one's asking questions to the person who we're mapping the other one's doing the post-it noting oh i love it robin. that's a fabulous idea okay great and, and where so, you want to do it, I'll let you set it up, Ben. Yeah, I can. I can definitely dump a template in here off to the right. And um, could I ask you actually to maybe take the first strong pass at, at sort of facilitating this, just to help us? I have a feeling that that you have a version of what that could look like in your mind, and I'm curious if we could kind of play with your version of this. How do you? Yeah, how would you okay. choose a user? How would you choose a need? That kind of thing. Well, so I don't. Mm. That is not in my mind until I, I mean, necessarily. Okay. No, it's weird. And that was the other thing I noticed in one of your other live streams. I'm like, oh no, you had all these like, like this skill, this wealth of skill, and went a reg you, the group automatically went to the top and started with the user. And I was like, oh, like can we like what? Mm. What are you like doing? What's already stable? Like uh, you, Mike. Let's start with you. Are you willing to go first, Mike, in terms of being the, the, the guinea pig of being mapped? If you ask me questions, I can answer them yeah. at my best hey. of time. And I can, um, I can do the typing? Yeah, oh, I'm awesome. Not, Yay. No idea what I'll say. Okay. And sometimes, <laughs> yeah, me neither. I mean, sometimes I, I actually don't work on a map. I just end up with a whole blitz of post-its. And then I, I start to move them onto the map in terms of stability or visibility. But um, so I guess... Um, I like to start with questions around um, the strategy cycle. Ooh, okay. Because otherwise, I am uh, I'm forgetting why I'm doing it. So, Perfect. like, the, perhaps the biggest question on that front, Mike, might be. Um, like for the sake of what do you do what you do? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, why are people bothering to make the time to collaborate on something or to get together on something? Actually, I want to say you, not people. Mm. Like why are you, why is this important to you? Oh, why is this important to me? Um, why is this important to me? The whole collaboration thing? I don't know. I guess I've just got... Um, I have a visceral visceral reaction to things not going very well. I have lots of experience of it, and I feel like there's a... 
you know how you get a I'd like to see more of this in my life. Mm. So the this being collaboration? That's right, yeah. Maybe it's because I'm fairly good at kind of um, uh, thinking things through. Uh, wouldn't this be great if? And then it's often collaboration stops good things happening. Wouldn't it be great if? So mm. what are the kind of, what's, what's an example of the great way that could look? What's an example of the great way that could look? I just like cool things when people get on and make things from the ground up. You know, in Nottingham, I'm involved in a hack space, you know, like a shared community workshop with no one running it, but 700 members. Mm. And it all just basically rubs together. And I, I often sit there thinking this place shouldn't exist. Certainly, you know, this shouldn't cost me, if, you know, a very small amount of money to be in this environment with all these cool people. Right. It's the stone soup of, you know, mm. everyone brings their knowledge and their ability and you can turn up and someone will teach you how to weld or solder and there's 3D oh. printers lying around and it's like, this is... Um, so it's, it's, the, it's the, the bottom collaboration, I think, is so rich and um, powerful rather than the top down, here's what it's going to look like. You know, the bottom of everyone bringing their stuff. Wow, it really makes me think about climate. Like there's a, like when, when you're in that space, you're feeling a climate of collaboration. And I'm, one, I, I'm zooming around, sorry, Ben. Yeah, I'm zooming right around over to decision-making process. Like what is the decision-making process in those spaces and where does it reside? It's um, what is the decision making process? It's a duocracy. <laughs> people who people who can do things and make things happen get to do things and make things happen. Think people who have ideas and talk about things and never actually do anything also have a place to do that. Mm. But it doesn't necessarily nothing necessarily happens for it and it's also so it's a place people can they can turn up and they can walk away from oh, and so people get there you know it's like we don't know why people get their needs met necessarily we don't know why people are members but they are so it's an interesting thing well, why do why are people here yeah. mm. what needs are they getting met you know why are they continuing to to be part of this big collaboration I'm thinking about agency as doctrine somehow. I don't know Ooh. how this makes sense, but I'm just adding it over here, Ben. Um, okay, Mike, what are you doing? And like, what what is what are the stable aspects of Mikeness that are happening in these spaces? The stable aspects of Mikeness. Um, I love that. Oh my <laughs> word. <laughs> I know it's really hard. Well, what do people tell you? I, I couldn't do it for myself. I had to go back to the testimonials. So I have this really um, a process of kind of big picture thinking, putting things in the boxes and then making sense of stuff. So the stable aspect of Mikeness is there'll be two or three people having a conversation on different levels. And I'll be able to go in and go, I'll figure out what their shared, if shared outcomes are you know, what the positives, what the negatives things are, you know, and, and so, you know, I'll be the person who comes up and says, if you're going to make a suggestion in a meeting, here's a template to fill in to make sure you've covered everything. So you don't turn up and um, you've not thought of everything you need to think of. So th there's a stable asset of me that I kind of bring and go, um, this is the way I look at the world from top down categorization type stuff and I'm really good at spotting those things and so kind of stable aspect of Mikeness is that if there's if there's a conversation going off in three or four directions I can often you can see the connections I can see the patterns or, and the oh, connections patterns. and things okay. like that yeah yeah and in terms of um I'm gonna like go a little on the nose with this one but in terms of like what people see 
as like Mike brings a lot to the table and that's why we pay him like what do they think you bring to the table um tell you that you bring to the table I have a brain that connects everything to everything else and I can't help that and it's something which I can go hey you know this over here that's just one of the things we've got over there too and we can we can deal with these two things together so my my pattern matching and pattern spotting and being able to give a name to things actually cool. which is like a, it's like on a on a map you know you can't put something on a map unless it's got a name right and if you can name different types of conflicts that people are having for example it's really quite powerful Ooh. you know if people don't realize they're in a bind or they're in a dilemma when they have that pointing out to them they go oh right okay now i've got a word for it i can now mangle that in my head mm. and i realize we're in a bind here you know <laughs> we kind of want this and we want this we can't do both what are we going to do it's that kind of seeing patterns naming them and then being able to go <laughs> yeah you're, you're upset at each other and it's because you're in a bind you both want the same thing from different angles and you can't have it what are we going to do so it sounds like you can you can recognize the tensions that are most salient in that relationship or conversation like that are showing up and like you know five or six years ago i couldn't do this mm. and i kind of had this need to go i can't explain what's happening to me here and so i've gone off and learned a lot of things and i can <sighs> i can now go i have a name for this and once you've got a name for it you can kind of you can you can analyze it it's, okay. it's like it's you've got a name for it it stays still while you so, look at it like i'm seeing already certain things like i'm i'm guessing but tell me if i'm wrong I mean, I'm already seeing some value chainy things kind of surfacing in terms of and, and some left right access. So this this like tendency to sort of connect everything to everything else that that seems like one of the more stable aspects of you like that you kind of had from the get go. Yeah, I, guess I can't you're... switch that off. Right. OK. <laughs> right. So um, so I'm wondering, Ben, if we can if we can snag some of these and and copy them over to a map absolutely just so we yes thank you um I, that. I mean even the creation of a space for duocracy is like super valuable so i love that it just landed in terms of a user demand right there i don't know who creates that space but i like it up there <laughs> um uh so if we were to move these around now, um, this shared community workshop, is this something that you host or create, Mike, or are you just you just participate in? It's something I participate in. Okay. So two thousand it's a two thousand square foot industrial workshop. Okay, okay, okay. So here's one of the things, because this is one of the ways I would think about this then, in terms of putting it. It matches my remember on mine i had this thing like i need to be in the spaces where people are having the messy thinking in order to make the connections in order to get the story in order to recognize whatever recognize the tension so i'm gonna say this is a in the chain it's a need it's a dependency that is in the chain it's probably i don't know where it fits visibility or stability wise but it definitely some of these other things depend on it yeah like rec well maybe not big picture thinking that kind of is lower i'm i'm just dragging stuff around here please feel free um making sense patterns um so you can't name conflicts unless you're witnessing conflicts so i'll say those are definitely dependent yeah, there. yeah definitely um the environment i can't remember what that was uh okay let's just um shuffle around a little bit you guys ready to rotate one sure if i become you ben and be note taker mike would you ask ben 
whatever question, I mean, you can use your own questions, whatever questions seem relevant to, to do a similar thing for Ben. Okay. Um, have you got what you need to document this? Me? Sue, yeah. Are you... Yeah, I'm, I mean, I just, we just sort of right now just have it all strewn about, but I think, um, awesome. I think we can look for clusters and, and, and stability and connections between our stuff. I think I'm going to switch colors though for Ben, okay. if that's okay. Um, mm. And then, I'll, so I'll just, I'll find a little space right adjacent here. Awesome. And uh, Ben, is there a question you'd like to be asked to kick off or would you like me to think of one? Uh, actually, there, there was something interesting that Janice mentioned in the chat, and forgive me if I'm not saying names right, but Janice Fingler, I think, and she she was like really like interested in how you use the strategy cycle first, Sue, to sort of get oriented in a way to like asking Mike questions, and so she's like, okay, is like if you didn't prompt Mike to walk through all of those slices of that of that strategy cycle. Is there a place where Mike would be more likely to sort of focus? Like, is his, is all of his, you know, you know, normal kind of Mikeness, essential Mikeness, focused on sense making and pattern matching of things in the mm -hmm. landscape, or is it more about like understanding the rules of the game for him? And I, I thought that was really interesting because to get meta by naming each of these steps we make them conspicuous and available to be discussed. And so it's like, suddenly we can talk about all these different dimensions of Mikeness. <laughs> I just thought that was really cool. And I, so yeah, I was just wondering what your response to that would be like, and, and perhaps Mike as well. It'd be, it's interesting to see myself, you know, laid out. So in so many words, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We took you apart. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't think of the step. So I think of the strategy cycle as not a cycle at all. I think of it as just sort of the nece necessary things that we're always doing all mm. the time. Anyway, we're always making decisions. We're always, there's doctrine baked into every single decision we ever make, whether we realize it or not. Yeah. <laughs> and so I just, I use them as sort of touchstones in no particular order. And I'm also trying to follow what Mike's saying. So if I don't hit them all, I don't really care Yeah. necessarily. Just trying to get things started and, and find the way through the thought patterns. I like that too, because, you know, I, I don't really believe that this is much of a cycle either. I mean, it's even Uda, which like Simon's kind of basing this on is like the cycle gets overplayed. Like mm. if you think of it as like sort of an entangled set of processes that are all happening together and meshing together and it's a big tangled mess. And this is our way of like calling into the mess and, and identifying different ways that the mess is behaving. I don't know. It, yeah. I, I like that idea of it being a touchstone. Anyways, sorry to distract you, Mike. Um, a question. Hey, you're up. Don't distract us, Ben. You're ah! up. And hot seat. <laughs> We're, okay, we're running a tight ship here, Ben. Come on. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've got my coffee. Um, hmm. So, was there something you'd like me to ask you about this? If Sue's going to look at what we do. Well, I, I always do feel it, there was. If if I may react to one of the things that you said, you mentioned that there's like a visceral reaction to things not going well. And I have like this lovely thing, um, which I've, I, I think I've mostly outgrown, but it's taken a lot of work. It's like whenever I participate in something that's not going well, I have like super severe anxiety. So I have like a bodily felt rejection of uncooperation or, no, I love conflict. So that's different, but like pointless conflict, maybe where it's like all about politics or it's all about something else. And I mean, I have to respect those things as powerful, mm. but the visceral reaction to things not going well, I really feel that. And there's an uncooperation. And what, what happens when, when you get the visceral, when you do get that feeling and there's an uncooperation, what, 
Yeah, it's kind of just like, hey, I'm in this, I'm in the middle of this giant, like, weird machine that is Rube Goldbergian, I guess. It's like, it's a giant, like, what is it doing? I don't know. Does anybody care? Like, here we are in the machinery, just like, kind of mashing around, and what's it producing? Well, nothing good, as far as I can tell, because nobody knows what it's producing. Mm, what do you do? Well, uh... <laughs> I leave. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. At first, at first, I think I, I this is like making side sort of references to life in, in the corporate world. I did my best, right? I tried to pin people down. I tried to ask them what they meant by certain words. And I was like, well, what do you mean by that? What does that mean? And if you keep asking those questions, either you'll find answers or you'll find nothing. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of terrifying. And, and so if you find nothing and you, and you look under the rocks, all the rocks and you're like, Oh gosh, there's nothing here. What do you do? Yeah. Yeah. What happens when you find nothing is, but what if you find something? What if something's there? What do you do then? Well, that's exciting because that something is kind of like a, it's a little bit of like Snowden esque language, I think, but like it's a point of coherence. Like, mm. Oh, there's a something there. <laughs> I've, I've opened, pulled up the rock and there's a something there. Like there, there are people who are starting to like share that little like moment of, ah, oh, this is what we're doing. And you know, it may or yeah. may not make sense in the large complex, like the large context of the organization, but here we, we, we have a common kind of agreement of what we're going to try. So something, it's not gone wrong yet. Yeah. And you ask people some questions and you've looked under the rock and there's something there. Yeah. Like they're doing stuff on purpose there. And that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, so love what that. I love that. What would you do there when, when you, they're doing stuff on purpose, what's that? What's the next things you do? Well, I think I want to understand it. Mm. Like, oh, there are people here doing things on purpose. Well, what are they doing? And teach me. Like, show me show me the things that you're doing. This is awesome. And I, I often don't really have much of a prejudgment that I'm applying to it, whether it's the right thing or the wrong thing, because so many times there's an absence of, like, like things are done accidentally and... I think that's one thing you can critique, but if you're doing it on purpose, well, at least there's a design. So I want to, I want to understand the design. I want to share it. I want to understand it with you. Right. There's no judgment about right and wrong, but there's purpose and you're going there. Yeah. And you don't want this to go wrong. So what, what would you do? Would you, would you map this? Would you write things down? Would you, well, I mean, what do? what's my role? Right. Like what, what do they need? And I, I tend to like play this um, like putty role. Like you kind of like stick me into all the cracks. <laughs> like I, just, I just show up and I was like, oh, what do you need? All right. You need me to hold this stuff together. All right. And you just like shove me into the into things that are broken or missing. And I don't right. know. It's the purposeful system that I yeah. love participating in. And I, I love the creation of purposeful systems, the, the design of things like that. So how do you how do you know? What do you see when you know that that needs some of Ben's putty <laughs> in it? Uh, friction, I think. Uh huh. Um, and it, it it's all like aligned with this like worldly view of things, right? Like there there's there's a cycle, right? There there's action being taken, and there's like um, it's it's interesting. Like the landscape in the strategy cycle is is really just in my mind, just about creating a surface area over which to do sense making. Mm. Like, okay, why are you here in the first place? What's the initial like game that you're playing is the purpose thing. But the landscape is like, okay, what's the vocabulary? What's the knowledge, the surface area over which you can have an intent. And then like climate is just like what's happening inside that surface area that, that you don't control. Doctrine is just like your rules for how you engage and how you approach it. And then leadership is like all the moves you can make, but then you take action. Right. And so it's like kind of catching up to the cycle that's already in motion. And you're looking for friction. Yep. There are these little moments in, in many organizations and projects where things like they're, they're perfect intent, right? We want to do things this certain way. We have, we have hopes and dreams and then it falls apart. Well, why does it fall apart? Why was it that you had to take your laptop home over the weekend and upload and download files on unreliable Wi-Fi? Like, why, why, why was that a step in our build process or our software development process? Like, that's weird. 
Tell so me about it. Is, is there a set of frictions that might... I mean, I'm looking at a Wardley map here. I mean, Genesis frictions are ones you've never seen before, right? Yeah. You know, commod- <laughs> oh. commodity frictions, on the other hand, is I've seen this before. Yeah, and, 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 and there's only one thing that we can do. <laughs> there's only one thing to do, right? Maybe. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. And I think um, one of the things, like, when you're inside an organization, you're inside a bubble, right? To, to a certain extent, when you're inside a society, like, in a nation, you're also in a bubble. But, like, inside an organization, you're in a smaller bubble. <laughs> and that bubble has its own rules and expectations and things that it's used to. But, like, what's really wild is if you can bring stuff from outside the bubble in and go, like, oh, yeah, you see how that thing's blowing up all the time? Well, if we change this, this, and this to, to match what other people are doing to solve this problem, oh, man. Then it's no, right. no longer a problem. Is, is that Ben's putty? It's it's a little bit of I think what you do with noticing the patterns and then connecting, like all, but also like connecting people together. Mm. And it's not just like the what's the argument, what's the conflict, let's name the conflict, but it's also who knows what and how do we get people talking, as well. Right. And that's like, it's a socio-technical system. Like the technical parts are like really crunchy, right? Because <laughs> you can mm. pick them up and break them and stuff like that. But the social parts are all like mushy and weird. And that's where the fun is, honestly. And that's where you might have a, it's, it's a user need, isn't it? Working with the social of a social technical system is is what you're doing. I made a map once um, that was basically what does Ben need? And this this was like, I heard that Kelsey Hightower once mapped himself in order to like figure out what to do with his career. And so I did the same thing. And one of, one of the things I came out of that with was, well, I I need to reduce harm no matter where I go. Like, that's kind of like the key thing is that's one of the easiest ways to be purposeful, even in the worst of circumstances is what can you do to reduce harm? And then the second thing was optimizing and circumventing systems. One or or two or both. (laughs) First or the second or or both of them. So, yeah, it's like messing with systems and doing so in a way that reduces harm, I think, is like really powerful kind of. Mm. It's a game that you can play almost anywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's now a good time to check with Sue and see what she's got from that. Wow, Sue, you get all sorts of fun stuff. (laughs) Um, I did notice some overlap just now with that, Ben. That harm thing, it, it, it actually, it, it's a call back to something that Mike mentioned on our first live stream about doing good according to who. Mm, yeah. And I, I was sort of thinking about that a lot since you, since you asked that question, Mike, and what came up for me was um, like humane, humane systems, like yeah. not creating suffering. And so it's very, it's very related to your reduced harm thing. Right on. I, and I, I think my theory is that purposeful systems reduce harm by implication. And that betrays my optimism a little bit. Because <laughs> I think that if people do things on purpose, they won't hurt other people. But... I don't know. So that's like a little bit of my value chain, I think. And that's interesting because uh, how much of these sort of things do we need to know before we'll collaborate with people? You know, how much How much do we yeah. need to know? How much do you need to know about someone before you invite them on to talk to them? Hmm. Do you need to have a fair idea what their values are in that sense? That's a really good question because, like, it's one that I obviously have with the live stream things. Mm. But I, I also, um, I would feel less comfortable. Uh, like, I, I'd, I would want to analyze a person's values up front and all sorts of stuff, if I didn't feel like I could take right action in the moment. Yeah, and I've, I think I've worked really hard on that, even though I'll still make mistakes in that respect. So, if you are a capable and powerful individual, which I'm not saying I am, you know, it's, it's just, I want to be able to take right action at least, then 
a lot of the, the, the barriers to collaboration kind of fall away because you can trust it first. Yeah. So I'm kind yeah. of curious about where trust falls for both, both of you when it comes to collaboration. What kind of trust do you need? Sue's got a big map of trust. I was going to say that is such <laughs> um, just a rabbit warren of a topic for me. Um, I mean, all right, I'll just say, say for one example, and it's not necessarily that I distrust someone, but if I'm not getting leverage for them, trust is almost moot. Sorry, leverage with them. Like, like if I'm not heard, if I keep making these, these ovations and asking questions and I'm, I'm getting like stonewalled, or I'm getting responses that don't respond to the overture, then there's no collaborative potential anymore. There's no, it's not even a conversant. Like, and I, it's, I don't know, that seems a little weird, but the, the, um, I think I, when I brought up that model last time, I named, you know, being heard, feeling psychologically safe, um, feeling valued, speaking of value chains, like those are sort of core aspects to trust according to the Hart Pence model of trust, which is still under development <laughs> by my friend Joyce Hart Pence. Um, but the obvious two are credibility and reliability. Um, but those, I think, I guess, if you're, if you're not feeling like you're heard at all, or that when you suggest an idea, it's immediately dismissed, like there doesn't seem to be a lot of potential for collaboration there. Mm. I mean, that sounds like curiosity, because you can be curious about people you don't understand, right? Yes. And yes. A lack of, if people are not curious about you, and you're not curious about them, you are likely to be able to collaborate. Right. And I, um, Dave mentioned that Wikipedia was a, an example of a complex system and how that he had good relationships with people who, you know, he didn't necessarily like because they obeyed the rules and they were after the same thing he was after. You know, politically, they might have been fairly, you know, right wing Americans, but they obeyed the rules and they were, I don't know if they were curious or not, but there was a, they could work together on some, they could, they could collaborate, right? Yeah. You know, I would love to bring it back to the three of us if we can. I have this. I have this agenda. I have a hidden agenda. <laughs> Sue, <It> is, <laughs> I, I really want to see. Like, I want to get to the point in the mapping where we could see, like, what is a possible move, and or maybe more than one, and why would we choose this move over that move? Kind of like that is something that I just rarely see happen in a in a a mapping context that matters and this what we put down at least matters to the three of us yeah and so i'm wondering if if i know this this could go very badly but i'm going to transfer your your stuff here ben go right ahead over to the the, the map also <laughs> i'm just going to slap it right on there i want to drag stuff around <laughs> and okay. i started writing down some of the things i heard you saying too so which direction would you like to go with this because we could we could continue the rotation well, so I was thinking that just in the in the interest of time, we could just snag what I already put on my map. Ooh. Because I already did that for oh, myself. Oh, yeah. What a good idea. Okay. And then we could maybe start to collectively just drag these things around and see if we could find any dependencies. And okay. Oh, are you grabbing that stuff, Ben? Yeah, I'll grab it real quick here. Okay. Thank you. Whee. What a mess. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it is a hot mess. It is a hot mess. And there might be, you know, we might be able to get rid of some redundancies because there's definitely some things I heard you say that really landed with me that, that I feel like are necessary in the value chain and that Mike just named again. So it might be a three-way value or a three-way dependency, which is curiosity. Mm. none of my work can happen without curiosity it mm. is core and and that includes um asking what i hope are generative questions or if if i'm asking questions that aren't generative then find another question you know so um i'm gonna delete animations from here because that's just the sort of value i deliver 
okay. and just try and get us back down to some atomic skills. Lovely. Um, okay. And get rid of the sort of some of the horizontal stuff here. Um, I heard something about cohering and coherence. So, Ben, you you named something that I, I captured it as um, the ability, like a sensitivity to cohering or not cohering that you seem mm. to have as a as a skill. So let's say we're mapping sort of skills here, sort of. Yeah. And I, sort of. and it seems like Mike has that as well, where what, what he sees is the, the, the conflict. Like he, he notices when people are coming apart in the discussion. Is that like a fair thing to say, Mike? I've spent some time practicing that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm guessing that all three of us have sent like some honed sensitivity skills and I bet they're on different things. Like mm. Mike, you named um, sensitivity to, or what was the one just Ten naming tensions, sensitivity to salient tensions, uh, big picture. Yep. Ben was sensitive. I mean, these are probably on here. I'm just wondering if we can kind of somehow glom them together <laughs> or something. I don't know. I'm 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 in the midst of the of the muck here. Uh, what if we put sense making as actually a need? Mm. I'm gonna get rid of this. Um, I'm getting rid of my a lot of my dependencies because they're just messing things up over here before we cluster. The mess will um, get messier before it gets less. Messy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, so sense making is something that the three of us have, I think, in terms of things we deliver, but it's also a skill that's like way down at the bottom in terms of that as well. But let's not worry about visibility. Mm -hmm. Connecting dots, You, I have that. And I think you had that too, um, Mike, mm. I don't know where it was. People together. I had a need for uh, gathering people together. Oh, and Mike, you named something about gathering people together as some, you said something about um, you wanted to make that happen, something about making that happen without paying a lot of money to be in the room or something like that. What did you say about that? Um, I don't remember, but I do know that um, I like things that have a low barrier to entry, if that makes sense. And that, um, people less yeah people who people can be there who want to be there with the fewest barriers because it's about you know people people bring what they can only bring stuff if they can bring stuff you know so there's a low barrier to entry as long as they're curious right or else you know no matter what they bring I'm putting this over on the right because we have some values baked in here and it just might nice to not lose them because mm. um, I share that I mean that's an aspiration I think with the story that I try I'm even challenging like I translated one of my scripts to German and boy did it put a fine point on the fact that my language is not accessible because I do not have the German skills to understand my own writing once it's translated <laughs> from English and I was like holy cow you got to redo this whole mindset around like yeah yeah is that another of your sentences for god's sake so like, yeah. is that another value of being un, being understood i think it's more from the angle of of i mean value i desire to be understood but i think the the value part of it is more i value making it accessible to more people it's similar mm. to your low barrier entry, yeah, to entry yeah. which is what made me think of it i i really um, connect with that as well cuz there's this weird place that i live a lot of the time which is right at the edge of of a bunch of new fun weird stuff and then pulling that out of the mess so that other people can play with it like it's like the making things accessible that is really, really fun. Yeah. Um, 
so you guys feel free to dive in. I'm just pulling things out that I see as values off to the right and, and changing color. Like, like Ben, you said the fun stuff is the social stuff of the socio-technical system. So that to me, fun. I mean, one of my values is play and fun. Uh -huh. Like if it's not fun, I'm, I don't want to be there really <laughs> if I can help it. So um, it seems like there's a value there as well. Um, but okay, you are saying, you are suggesting something um, in terms of values, like I do value science. Like I put it there, it was on my, it was on my, my value chain because it's important that it's not just made up shit. <laughs> like it's either gotta be something that you're feeling and you tell me you're feeling it and it's your reality or let's look for the places where people have already spent a whole lot of time trying to understand what we're just blah blah blahing about mm. yeah and need, so that is a value stay, as well staying only one step away from evidence is useful you know you start going too far away from facts from science from what you can see and hear you can start getting a little bit untethered um, I like that evidence. I, I'm going to say, uh, you know how they, a lot of people say evidence informed instead of evidence based. I like it to be evidence informed. I just yeah. want to know what people who have thought a long time about it have thought about. I don't necessarily have to buy their interpretations. I can make my own, but I do want to do the due diligence. Yeah. Yeah. That reminds me of this um, correspondence versus coherence discussion with Jabe. That's also on this uh, YouTube channel if, if folks want to take a look at that too. It's like oh, cool. the ticking and tacking back and forth between coherence where like things make are, are, are making sense together and then correspondence where they're based on something close to reality going back and forth. Yeah, coherence, cor correspondence. Um, so I don't know what we can do with this hot mess. <laughs> There's <laughs> enough time for us to look for some synergies among, I mean, I mean, there's plenty of synergies, but in terms of a, a move, but there is a move that has emerged in the chat. Yeah. I don't know if you guys noticed it. Oh, I might've missed it. Um, someone suggested we, we, oh my God, the chat. I mean, this is the problem. I can't, I can't fully, <laughs> ma I can't mind the chat while we're having this conversation. I love it. Everyone here in the chat, I, I just love that you're here and, and saying these things. This is great. Oh, Barbara Frontera said, I want the three of you to come to the New York City Complexity Meetup and continue this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> There's a possible move. It sounds pretty low risk, maybe. I don't, you know. If, if I have a thing. I, I need to go to sleep on problems. So that's what I'm, I can look at things like this and I'm a bit like a goldfish, just opening and closing my mouth at the wonderfulness of it. Oh. But if I if I take it all in, you know, I'll wake up tomorrow and the day after and it will make more sense to me. Absolutely, Mike. Uh, I, this is another thing that we share. If I can't sleep on it, I can't make sense of it. I am not a real time sense maker. I'm not. Now, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, we... me, me too honestly i have to go away and it's usually not overnight for me it's, it usually involves a lot of work um so yeah. it's more of an active thing than a passive thing for me um but i i, I don't perform like I, I well okay obviously i'm doing live streams and there's a certain like thing here but there it's limited in its depth because i'm i'm not i have to sit down and like just like pour over like articles yeah. and research and all this kind of stuff and like get it all in my head <laughs> Ah, and that will be interesting if we all take a copy of this and see where we go with it and what we do with it. That's a great idea. And then have a narrative <laughs> over it, if, if, because I'm a little bit lost with maps without narrative. You know, in books, I like, mm. you know, um, you should a map should have someone talking at, at it, talking about it, and pointing at it. You know. So, Mike, the, did you see the live stream that Ben did where um, JD? Got very, I'm going to use a word that I just learned recently and it's not very accessible, but sentential in the mapping. <laughs> Meaning making sentences. <laughs> <laughs> she did get so very she, sentential. The arrow, or they did, yeah. Sorry, what? They, they did get very sentential. They were like yes. making the so words the between arrows the things. Would yeah. like connect. It was like you could read the map in a sentency way. Yeah. And that was very helpful. I would, I'm plus one for that idea. Mike. Yeah, 
if you name the connections, you can often just read the map as a, yeah. I would also love it if we would, um, if we have time, if, <laughs> I'm just cracking up at the chat here. Um, <laughs> Barbara. Um, if we would scan through the chat and see if there were insights that people offered that could trigger stuff for us as we're going off and mapping solo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the value. Like, I think, Sue, you might have said, you know, you need to be in an environment where there's problems so you can figure out what the problems are. And I'm the same, you know, by myself. I won't say or think anything interesting whatsoever. But if you put me in a context where stuff's going on, and I'll, I'll, make, I'll try and make sense of it. And the chat is just another great person in the room doing that. Maybe we need a... A fourth cam, a chat cam. <laughs> Honestly, um, it's not um, a bad idea. Um, <laughs> chat cam. I yeah. also wouldn't have any problem with sharing that mirror link with the people who are in the live stream and let other people slap post it notes on there, ask questions, make connections, whatever cluster. I'd have no problem with that. Mm. Okay. No. That's an exciting idea. Here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> to, to make to make that idea safe to fail, <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to save an export of this image just so that we have this little content right here. And then what I will do is I will create a link to this mirror board that everyone can use. Uh, but I'm not going to put the link in the chat. I'm just going to say it out loud. And that way, the folks who are here who are watching right now We'll be able you have to, to find watch it. to the end, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> watch to the end for the secret reveal. Okay, so I'm creating a. I think that was more of a future idea, like during the live stream. Oh, like, okay. We, okay. Yeah. Oh, so I, I, I got you. Okay, so. Well, Sorry about that. Anyways, it, if you all would like to peruse, I, I could. Any objections to sharing this with folks? Just the, no. the peruse of the board? Okay. No. So I'm going to. Um, for some reason, Ben, it won't let me copy and paste stuff from this. It says I don't have permission. Uh, weird. Okay. Oh, I'm deleting all these emoticons. Should I not? You can definitely delete those emoticons. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm creating a link, and it's for those of you who would like to check out this board and play with it, go to lwm.events slash 510. So lwm.events slash 510 for May 10th, in case that wasn't obvious. Although it's the US version of May 10th, which is weird orders of months and things. So uh, if you want to play around and take a, a look at all the stuff that we pasted into the board, it's lwm.events slash 510. And I think we've come to the end of our hour, but I think we had better do another one sometime soon. <laughs> Super fun. Yeah, I'd love to keep going with this. I've so got a whole load of somewhere. a whole load of tension I need to resolve by making some sense of this board. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and so feel free to use this this board if you want to do that, or I can make sure that you I can export this board so you all can grab a copy mm. of it. Actually, I can do that right now. Download a board. Yeah. Backup. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't mind just having a place to like. A, I can bring it over to my sandbox and all right. fuck so around with it. I'll email that to you. Um, awesome. I wanted to. Th Thank you both so much for, for going on this very like chaotic and lovely journey through collaboration and things like that. Like we haven't even gotten to the gameplay side of this yet, which I think is going to be really an exciting kind of uh, peak in this conversation. And it's like having this surface area to play with is going to make that conversation even more awesome. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it actually is what makes that conversation possible in a meaningful way. Yes. Yes. Oh, I love it. Okay, and one last thing before I forget, um, I wanted to make sure that folks had the link to Mike's post as well. I'm just going to put it in chat. That Mike mentioned a post at the beginning. And um, and Sue, do you have anything that we should link them to as well? Should we link them to your Patreon or anything else? Oh, I, if you uh, Google my name and you can pretty much get, I mean, my name, my, my domain is my name and Patreon links are everywhere. So Fabulous. nothing... As long as you have my name, you can find me. Oh, I think I, I think I found it right here. Okay, boom. And Sue and Mike uh, have their Twitter handles are also in the description of this video. 
I wanted to thank you both for taking the time to do this with me. And I'm, I'm really glad that you were here. I want to say thank you to chat as well. Thanks for being here and showing up for us. It really means yes. a lot. And honestly, the fact that you're here and typing stuff just, it makes this so much like it makes it so amazing. I think just to, I don't know. I have a lot of fun and I'm grateful for you all. I've had loads. Thank you, Ben, for putting this together and Sue for was a lot of fun. All, all that thinking, Sue. Thank you. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> More to come. More to come. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Take care.